Hey folks, we're here at the Taste of Universal event. I hope you can hear me well. I'm gonna take off my mask real quick. I hope you can hear me well with the music and the mask, but we are going to be trying um, our limit of foods. We have my dad and I are here. We each get five tastings to try today. And our first stop here at the Hollywood and Dine, we're gonna try the Korean corn dog and the hot chicken sandwich. Let's hope there's some good food. There are some new foods and there are some old foods. So let's see how everything tastes today. So the first things we're trying today are the Korean corn dog and the hot chicken sandwich. The normal price of these are $10 each, so if you want to purchase these aside from your five tasting allotment or once the park reopens, um, they are $10 each. So let's see if they are worth it. Here's the Korean corn dog. It doesn't quite look like a Korean corn dog that we've seen on TV or in restaurants in Koreatown, but let's see how it is. Granted, I've never had a Korean corn dog, but this doesn't remind me anything about Korea. It's, it's just a regular corn dog. The batter, I think if they fry it right or fry it longer, it'll be more crispy because it has a slight crisp to it, but I wouldn't recommend this. I wouldn't buy it again or order it in the future. Just a regular corn dog, so no big deal. And here we have the hot chicken sandwich. Now I have to say, first and foremost, if you know me, Howlin' Ray's is the king of hot chicken, at least in LA. So I have high expectations, but I'm, I'm hoping for the best here. Definitely not hot. It has a slight kick to it, maybe a little bit of cayenne. It's a juicy chicken, it's not crispy. The coleslaw isn't that big of a deal. Get a closer shot of that. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend for especially for $10. It's a decent price for the size. I wouldn't recommend this one either. Slight correction, I thought I never had a Korean corn dog. But when we were in Japan, actually, we did have a Korean corn dog. There's like a Korean I don't know if it's a chain or just a mom and pop shop that they happen to open in Tokyo, but we did have the Korean corn dog there, so I can't for sure say this tastes nothing like what a Korean corn dog should taste. Of course, the weather started out great today and it is pouring rain right now. Luckily, they've opened up this new area between the Despicable Me attractions and the French Quarter. And also on the other side is Secret Life of Pets. So it's a nice little patio area where you can enjoy and luckily they have plenty of umbrellas for you to sit under. The first thing we got is the regular grilled cheese. Doesn't look like much. And this is $10. If you get the version with meatballs, it's also $10, which doesn't quite make sense. You're paying the same if you want meat. So if you can eat meat and you want it, I'd say just get that one. Just wanted to get the regular grilled cheese today. Let's try that out. This is definitely something you get. Your picky eating kids are okay with just the grilled cheese. Definitely not worth it. And next up, I got the banana hazelnut pudding. I so I think this one is new. I've never eaten at the Despicable Me Cafe before, and I know they've had some that little treat corner next to it. I don't think I've ever eaten there either. You can see the layers of hazelnut and banana and some whipped cream on top with a Minion logo. That's actually not bad. This is the first thing I've enjoyed today so far. I love banana flavored anything. You definitely get a lot of banana. Let me try to get some more of that hazelnut. The hazelnut, it's, it's light, so if you're kind of iffy on hazelnut flavor, I definitely recommend this. Personally, I wouldn't have added whipped cream anyway, but they're going to. Mm, not a bad dessert. I'm happy with that. So. So this is the area I was just talking about in the last clip where we were sitting across or in between the French Quarter, the Despicable Me area, and coming up in just a moment, the Secret Life of Pets. 
I don't believe this patio area was ever opened. I could be mistaken, but I know in all the times we've come to the parks, we've always walked by and around this area and we never noticed it. And here is that whole new section of Secret Life of Pets, which used to be mostly the Walking Dead attraction, which was just from that one entrance closer to the beginning of the park. And then around the corner would be the Universal Theater. And then up here, you see the Despicable Me area. Dunk. Which one of the group is dunking? That one's dunking? Wow, man, you didn't even hesitate you like this one right here. That's the dunking in the group. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. And do you guys like waffles? Yeah? How many waffles do you have every day? You have, you have two? I have 47. My favorite pop tart is the one that the blueberry. Man, I love blueberries. Those are the best. Did you guys want a picture together? Yeah, okay, um, everybody stand on the line and get close together and then turn around and face the camera. Yeah, look, look over there and say, cheers! Oh, you're welcome. See you guys later. It's about 1.30 right now. You can see behind me, the lines are getting pretty long. Of course, it's the opening weekend and the event has been sold out, but just so you are aware, it's in, on the weekend days, Saturdays, Sundays, it'll be even busier, more people will come earlier. It's a Friday, so I'm assuming people will come later because of the rain and because of work. If you do come on a weekend or a day that's sold out, try to get here as early as you can to avoid the lines and just expect some wait times because they're not, they're not moving slow, but they're not moving that fast. You'll definitely have time given it's a seven hour event, but just be prepared to wait for some of the lines. is getting the clam chowder in the bread bowl right now and I got the pomegranate turkey leg. I've been going to Universal and Disney for years. I always tell myself I want to try the turkey leg and I've never gotten the turkey leg. So I figured why not try it today. So let's see how this turkey leg comes out. There we go. There's the giant turkey leg. My first ever turkey leg. Oh that's sweet. That is so sweet. Let's dig into the turkey leg for real now. Pieces of mess. That meat. The exterior skin is so tough, it's almost like jerky. The meat is soft, tender, juicy. The pomegranate flavor is out of this world. Not bad for my first turkey leg experience. Would I get it again? No, only because it's so tough to eat. I mean, it's like, it's literally like jerky. It's so tough. But look at that steam, it's nice and hot. The turkey meat isn't bad, it's good. Definitely recommend that though, for at least a one-time try. You won't be disappointed if you like turkey. It's taking me back to Thanksgiving, that's right. My dad got the sourdough in the bread bowl. What? Let's see how this is. Piping hot. That's not bad. Pretty good clam chowder. You can definitely taste the clams. They're not too chewy. A lot of potatoes. You can definitely tell they loaded up the potatoes. It's thick and creamy. It has really good herbal flavor. Don't forget that sourdough bread. Mm. Fresh sourdough always hits the spot. Broomsticks in Wizarding World, and I got the hot, sticky toffee butter bread pudding. 
I'm pretty sure I've had this before and that's why I really wanted to get it again. I don't think there was anything new here today. You know, why not get some things we enjoy? Hmm. It's topped with ice cream as well. It's definitely sticky. The bread is soft with a crispy exterior. The cool ice cream just makes it all come together. Universal doesn't have the greatest food everywhere, but I'm always happy to eat at the three broomsticks. And of course, the butterbeer can't go wrong with that. My favorite is the frozen butterbeer. It's a cold day, so I had to get the hot one. I actually like the frozen one first, then the hot, and then the regular one. Mm, that's good. I think the hot one seems the least sweet of all three also. So it's kind of like getting a, like a regular coffee. It's not gonna change or add too much sweetness to whatever dessert you're getting. The one thing we didn't get to eat today was the chili relleno, so we took that home, but it definitely looks good. Here's a giant Bavarian pretzel. <laughs> Look how big that thing is. <laughs> it's so big. That's what she said. <laughs> giant soft pretzel. It's bread. You can't go wrong with bread. Nice and hot. Of course, if there's cheese or some kind of sauce, they do offer mustard with it, but we're not really, we don't care about mustard with the pretzel, but you can definitely take this home and make up your own sauce at home. That concludes our day at Taste of Universal, and overall it was a good day. You know, it's nice to be back in the park after a year. It's now been a year since we've been able to come in. Luckily, we still have some time left on our passes, so once they reopen, we'll have like three or four months available to come back. Overall, you saw with the food, some of the food is just not worth it. It's not that great, even the new food. Universal typically isn't known for their food. Kind of feels more like fair, county fair food. It's just not that great. Disneyland definitely still has the upper hand. There are a few things, like I mentioned earlier, that the Harry Potter or the Wizarding World area has some great options and a few other places here and there. You definitely don't come to Universal for the food other than a few like snack options or desserts and drinks. If you have any questions or comments about anything, feel free to leave them down below. You still have time. They are selling out a lot of days, so be sure you check it out. I think they did raise the prices now, so just keep an eye out. And also, if you do have a pass, you do get a discount for that. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next video.